we all have our, you know, our pluses and minuses. It was a crime of passion. I'm a passionate woman. Oh my god. Don't know if I checked. Let's see. I haven't eaten anything. I have I had two eggs this morning. I had two eggs this morning. Mm. Welcome back to Life Lessons in Film. Greetings. Greetings. <laughs> and today we're going to be making sense of life through happiness. Yeah. 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 So it was my first time watching mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Second time for him. Mm -hmm. He recommended it. Mm -hmm. And I was kind of throughout wondering why and why it's a comedy. But mm. I still enjoyed the movie, yeah. actually. It's a morbid comedy. It's yeah. a morose it, it is, It's a very realistic movie. If you haven't seen it, just don't go into it expecting an escape. So it follows basically a family, right? Yep. A family of uh, six. Five. Five, yeah. Three sisters and a mom and a dad who are uh, separating. Mm -hmm. Documents their, their lives and as it does document their lives little by little, this dysfunction, their dysfunction. The tapestry of dysfunction gets revealed. Exactly. So that's basically the whole movie, right? Mm -hmm. The four storylines are all involving the family. The one storyline is the mother and the father. The other is the daughter, Joy. The other one is daughter, Helen. And daughter, Trish. Trish. Yeah. yeah. The dysfunction becomes apparent in their avoidance, mm -hmm. their denial. All of, their, all of them are denying the reality mm -hmm. of their lives. Mm -hmm. They're all denying their discontentment mm -hmm. and they're hellbent on, yeah. on like yeah. avoiding dealing with the truth of their lives, yeah. except for Joy. I think she's just much more deep feeling than everybody yeah. else. Sometimes as a human being, and this movie I feel depicts that, if you are going through some rough times, you either go to avoiding the pain of it and you do everything you can to mm -hmm. basically like pull the wool over your eyes over your own eyes literally yeah. yeah either you're that kind of person or you're that kind of person who just cannot sit in discontentment mm -hmm. and is like we need to fix it even yeah. if you're fumbling through things which yeah. is what i feel like joy is doing mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. yeah um, which is probably why i think she's generally the main character supposed to be the most sympathetic yeah. one i wonder even also if that's why they chose to name that character joy yeah. in the sense that they're all searching for happiness but the dis i like that there's a there's a definition or a distinction that i like about joy versus pleasure versus happiness right yeah. joy is a long-lasting happiness yeah. pleasure is a short-lived happiness yeah. and that comes with a lot of negative stuff yeah. always seeking pleasure you're never satisfied joy is maybe not doesn't have the same highs or the same lows but it's a more constant happiness so yeah. i wonder if, i don't know uh, i don't know maybe that's i mean i feel like they did it on no i definitely I, don't think it was yeah. an accident right yeah. the reason i say that is when you look at this family, right, Joy is the person who is the most abandoned. Mm -hmm. She's the most isolated. And everybody who is supposed to love Joy, like her sisters and her parents, mm -hmm. they've disappointed yeah. her a lot. She's you know? the scapegoat. She's the one they can always feel better about their lives and helps with their denial of not fixing their issues because they can look yeah. at Joy. They, and they always yeah. do that, even as they talk to Joy, one yeah. of the sisters. So you have Joy, right? Joy is unmarried. Mm -hmm. She's She keeps moving from job to, to yeah. job. Trish is married to a psychiatrist and has three kids. Mm -hmm. The all-American yeah. dream yeah. life, basically. Yeah. And then you have Helen, who has a... She's an author, and she's mm -hmm. very a successful one at mm -hmm. that. And has a lot of these, you know, media gatherings or book signings and stuff, and a lot of men who are just, like, fawning over her. Mm -hmm. And Joy is always this person that they... Oh, you know, we... She just... Things never work out for her. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Poor Joy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and these are conversations that they have with each other privately, but they also are quite happy to talk to Joy and to say, you know, Joy, we just felt like you were doomed to failure. This is Trish having a conversation mm -hmm. with Joy. We thought you were doomed to failure, but you know, it, I, I don't know, like things are looking up for you. And I feel, I just wanted to tell you, I'm just so proud, yeah. you know, yeah. but there is so much condescending behavior, mm -hmm. so much condescending interaction. I felt like she was condescending. 100%. Mm -hmm. It was absolutely that. Somehow you always just seem so doomed to failure. And now I see that's not true. 
there's a glimmer of hope for you after all. <laughs> but I'm sorry, I know I'm repeating myself. I'm just really happy for you. <gasps> they all do that. At the me. end scene where the, the whole family's together, Helen does a similar thing to Joy, but Joy doesn't seem to really read any of that. Yeah. I think that it's one of those things where her role, and she's so conditioned, so used to being the person that can absorb all that negativity or condescension or denial and distraction that it, it's just so normal for her. And she kind of just accepts that as just the way of things. So she yeah. doesn't even actually really get hurt by it, which is why it never changes. She never fights back. So there's no reason for them to ever be have to reflect on, oh, am I really, maybe, maybe I am treating Joy unfairly because yeah. Yeah. There, there's, there's no shift in the paradigm. So I think, yeah. Definitely Joy was just that one member of the family that was always treated so badly. And if you are treated that way, you know, since you were a kid, mm -hmm. I think you obviously internalize that. And mm -hmm. so she doesn't realize yeah. the problematic nature in which the sisters relate to her. Mm -hmm. She never fights back. She never thinks about, you know, why is it that this family treats me this way? And then in her relationships outside of her family, she always attracts people that treat her the same way as her family does. Mm -hmm. They are selfish. They think of themselves. They don't think about how their behavior uh, or the things that they say affects joy. That's mm -hmm. literally her yeah. dynamic. She keeps attracting yeah. those people and doesn't realize the pattern. I think one of the, like, the main theme is that they all, of course, are seeking this happiness, but because there's a lot of, when you have a lot of denial and distractions and not communicating, not being honest with yourself, uh, what you need or what you, you know, you have a lot of illusions or fantasies blocking the actual reality. And so they, they have all these fantasies of, you know, oh, uh, the parents want to separate and then their lives will be so much better. They'll move to a new place. They'll meet new people. The reality is, you know, they're, they're, they're lonely, especially the mother is lonely. They don't, they keep denying. Neither of the parents want to ever admit that they're divorced, which in all intents and purposes they are. Everyone keeps saying it, but they, they refuse to admit that they're getting a divorce because that, that reality just isn't pleasant to think about. So they, yeah. they prefer the, the fantasy of, the we want the, the good things of kind of a fresh start without the other things that come along with that. With uh, Helen, at one point, uh, she has this, uh, she, you know, she's feeling like a fraud personally, inwardly, but she won't express it to her family for fear of then seeming worse unhappy. off, unhappy, which <laughs> like is something failure. that the family just can't handle. The family yeah. cannot handle unhappiness, cannot handle drama, cannot handle issues. Yeah. So no one ever brings it up. And that's probably something they got used to probably growing up. And But at one point, Philip Seymour Hoffman is a character in the movie. Alan, he, his, his thing that gets him off is calling random people. If it's a woman, he, he you know tries to ask them questions about what they're wearing or whatnot, and then you know that yeah. uh, that arouses him, and he ends up just calling Helen at the perfect time when Helen's in her her darkest, most depressed situation, and he ends up just you know like he doesn't know who it is, but he just you know just talks shit to her, and then she feels like oh wow this this guy's he's the one person that actually sees through my BS. This is a turn on, and then so you know she becomes obsessed with him and then she keeps calling him he keeps hanging up because he, he his thing is just calling people and hanging up he, he and then so he uh be careful with what you, what you wish for basically because now he actually he's a very lonely guy too and feels and like he's been pursuing her pursuing her outside of just yeah calling. exactly they live in the same building so in his mind he he has these ideas of of getting to know her or getting with her but then when it actually happens and she wants him to come over then he doesn't know what to do. He's frozen. Yeah. So she, they don't know what each other look like. Well, she doesn't. And eventually she's like, I want you to come over. I want you to come over. He eventually comes over. Not what she expects at all. Yeah. And uh, goes poorly. She asks him to leave. But that's kind of, again, the, the, the disappointment of her expectation of this, this man who's going to be like all the other men she's been with, but also is real and not superficial because she talks about with her sister. That's one time where she's a little honest with her sister where she says... Oh, I'm just with all these very beautiful men. She's like, but it's so superficial and I feel empty. So maybe she's hoping that this guy will complete her. But in actuality, in reality... I mean, I don't know. I don't think that she was hoping that this guy would complete mm. her. I think that was testament to the issues that she personally has. Right. Because she has this self-loathing. Mm -hmm. And so just as she was talking about how she's a nothing mm -hmm. or nobody... She gets a call from some random stranger mm -hmm. to validating, saying the exact same thing, mm -hmm. which validates her personal right. feelings, right. right? In her 
distorted, unhealthy, I guess, yeah, mind. Perception of, yeah. yeah, her unhealthy perception of herself. Yeah. She is a, she feels validated and she likes she likes it when someone validates her negative ideas of herself, which right. I think is kind of normal. Yeah. Even though people don't necessarily consciously seek that out. But yeah. I do think that people consciously seek out people who treat them yeah. the way that they feel about themselves. Yeah. So if you yeah. feel like you're worthless then you're going to most likely attract and be attracted to right. someone who, who treats you the way that you feel right. very badly. Right. Even though you know, like, yeah. you will subconsciously understand that I'm not enjoying this at all. Yeah. But at the same time, you want it. Yeah. And you won't understand why. It, why. Yeah. Um, so I think that was what was going on there. Yeah. The whole movie, I find, is that it depicts how, you know, people, all, all people are looking for happiness mm -hmm. in whatever form it, yeah. it comes. But I think there's this superficiality to it in the mm -hmm. world as we know it today. Mm -hmm. What is happiness exactly? Mm -hmm. Looking at the way that the world is structured right now, work-wise, you have to get a job, you have to get money, and then pay for your apartment, mm -hmm. right? All of these things have made it so that happiness is never anything that is internal. Mm -hmm. It's more materialistic. Mm -hmm. And so people then pit their happiness the yardstick for happiness yeah. are is things like how successful are you yeah. you got a book deal check you're you're happy mm -hmm. you got you have the perfect husband the perfect home yeah. with your perfect husband and your perfect kids perfect yeah. if you don't have these things you're married you got you're married for like 40 years okay mm -hmm. yeah. check you're all good yeah. you're good yeah. there's nothing wrong yeah. here so those things are tangibles mm -hmm. and i think that's how that's the world we live in really yeah. we live in a world of tangibles and so people then neglect themselves mm -hmm. um and i think that is this movie is a representation of that yeah because when you see trish and helen they go to dinner mm -hmm. and they always and they're just kind of like all of them taking stock of i have this book signing and i'm just so tired and all of these men are just so into me you know like i'm so pretty and it's so annoying <laughs> um but you know like oh, life is so hard but i'm sure I, I, i'm sure you're good Oh no, I'm I'm struggling, but you know, no, actually, I'm not struggling. I am married to my psychiatrist husband and my three kids and my beautiful house. Like, it, I'm really, really happy. Life is perfect, but joy, oh joy, yeah. she's a lost cause. Yeah, remembering it now is an, a nice detail. Where right at the beginning, the dinner scene, they're like, "Oh, this place is terrible." And it's like, "Well, joy, joy recommended, recommended it. it." Yeah, they say all of these things, but then meanwhile, they go home, and the author Helen is upset you right she's being she's paging through her one of her books mm -hmm. uh, about childhood childhood rape and she's reading it she's like i'm a fraud i don't even know anything about rape i've never been raped oh god life would be so much better if i had been raped you know then i'd be authentic you know what i mm -hmm. mean so this is the same person who's very happy about her successful career right mm -hmm. you have trish yep. who hasn't had carnal knowledge with her husband for a long time we discover this because her husband the psychiatrist you know is sharing this information to uh, with her with his psychiatrist and then on top of that in the home the kid is upset at one point and she said oh you know he's just upset like he wants attention that's it just ignore him your own kid ignore your own kid who's low he's depressed well, is anything the matter? I don't want to talk about it. Ignore him. He's just doing it for attention. He thinks she'll be impressed. As if. It's a family that is a victim like so many other people, like all of us really to a degree, of of looking at happiness outwardly, at, at material things, right? The how long the longer you've been married is the happier you should be. That's why people have these milestones of like ten years, yeah. twenty years. Oh wow, then that must mean even though in reality for a lot of people, it's like, yeah, but I haven't, I've, I was unhappy for 18 of the 20 years I've been married. So there's yeah. no like, but they, they want to, a lot of people, the, the, the mother and father probably want to stay not divorced because then they'll lose all that perceived happiness. Yeah. But if you separate, but you're still counting up the numbers, right? It's, it's yeah. all these, so that, that's how people look at things. And then like Trish with her, we got a house, boom, there's a tangible material thing. Okay. Well, you must have a certain level of happiness to have that house in this area. Then you have a husband who's, you know, got a, an esteemed job and then you've got yeah. kids, right? Yeah. Then in actuality, Perfect. you know, yeah, they, the, the, the marriage is, is not very, yeah, they don't get intimate. Yeah. Later, uh, it comes out that the husband is a pedophile. Yeah. So everything falls apart, right? Yeah. Again, it's, it's the whole, like, if you're not happy now with nothing, you're not going to be happy with stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, they continue this facade of happiness, right? Even in the last scene, they're having dinner, all of them together in the mom, in the mother's house. The mm -hmm. mom has, and, and dad have um, separated their own, they're living in. But they're own. still together, which maybe they say, oh, yeah. you know, but it's that they're thing of divorced, like, yeah, but they're on separate they're, sides of the yeah, table and yeah. Yeah. But they don't live together. Yeah. Right. And so now they're having dinner. 
And I remember one of them, I don't remember who said it, something like, you know, where there's life, there's hope. It just kind of consolidated the whole movie, mm -hmm. what I felt, like the theme of the movie that just, I refuse mm -hmm. to acknowledge yeah. and grapple with the fact of me being deeply, deeply lonely, yeah. me deep, feel, being deeply sad. Yeah. I refuse to, to see that. Yeah. I think it is nice to say that where there's life, there's hope, of course. Mm -hmm. But in a, in a setting like that, yeah. where no one is actually dealing with issues, yeah. I don't think there's really no. any hope because hope comes along yeah. if you're actually willing to get through the tough stuff. Mm -hmm. But the family isn't willing mm -hmm. to get through the tough stuff, nor are they willing to support each other exactly. through it. So you have a bunch of these people that are also sad and in agony yeah. and don't even realize, number one, that they're causing each other pain. Mm -hmm. Also, on top of that, not realizing that they're both in the same boat, mm -hmm. you know, and if they were just honest, if they just unpack, especially because mm -hmm. they're family, yeah. you would think that family is a place where you can be vulnerable Safe and space. open. Yeah, but so. this, it, 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 it ceases to be yeah. when all of you are lying to yourselves. Mm -hmm. Right? And lying to each other too. Yeah. Uh, it's similar uh, for me of the, uh, at least you have your health. Well, having health doesn't do you anything if everything else in your life is a lie yeah. or in denial. Because yeah. then you're just dragging it out longer. Health plus honesty, self-honesty and, and, and self-knowledge and the knowledge of, of, of the world and your environment. Then health adds to that. Yeah. But health on its own, I don't think means anything if, yeah. if the rest of your life is a cage. The other relationship that was really interesting to me was the relationship between Alan and that girl who murders mm -hmm. um, the guy who... The doorman. The doorman. Yeah. Kiss me again. But that was just an act. I let him kiss me one last time. And I grabbed hold of his neck. And I twisted it. Backward. Here you are. Thank you. Oh, I'm going to say self-defense, to be honest. Because yeah. he, she he had just been raped by, yeah. by him. Yeah. I found their relationship to be so sad. For mm -hmm. a long time, she's been interested in him. He has not been interested in, in her whatsoever. And he, she's a, a heavier lady, as is he. Mm -hmm. And he has a deep sense of self-loathing for himself. Mm -hmm. uh, self-loathing, right? Mm -hmm. And so he sees her basically kind of like a reflection of himself, right? Mm -hmm. And so he's not going to want to pursue a relationship with someone who... A female version of himself, mm -hmm. basically, mm -hmm. as a lot of people do, right? Yeah. Like, you don't want to... You find yourself repelled by people who remind, remind you, you of the yeah. things you don't like about yeah. yourself. Yeah. Um, even though you don't necessarily consciously... If you aren't... Con even though you're not... You may not be consciously aware of that. Yeah. They end up, you know, in the end, after being rejected by their peers, basically. That's the thing that they... That they're com the thing they have in common is that sense of being rejected by their peers. And so this is the thing that actually draws them together. Mm -hmm. After Helen tells Alan to leave, she's not his type, right? Because she'd invited him over after the call, but then discovers that you're not the hot guy that I usually go for. Um, this isn't going to work. Please leave. You're not my type. Rejected. Goes to uh, that girl's place, whose name I can't remember right now. He goes there knowing because, he, you know, she's expressed in many ways mm -hmm. interest, right? Knowing that she's going to receive him warmly and even though she's not he's not necessarily attracted to, mm -hmm. to him and they lie in bed together and they go to bed mm -hmm. nothing happens nothing no kind of engagement mm -hmm. engagements occur they just sleep mm -hmm. right but there is that comfort that they they seek in each other the thing about that relationship it made me sad because it's it's kind of one of those things where people who are rejected are drawn to each other just based on the fact of both you and i are people that are ostracized from mm -hmm. our social group. And so that's the thing. That is what forms their relationship. Yeah. I don't think those kinds of relationships ever work mm -hmm. personally because firstly, both of them have that feeling of they are unhappy about yeah. the fact of being um, so different from, mm -hmm. from, from, from their peers. Mm -hmm. They're unhappy about that. They're unhappy about feeling so awkward mm -hmm. all the time and not feeling attractive. They're, mm -hmm. they're, they don't like these things about themselves. Mm -hmm. um, and so if you're... If, you, if you're building a relationship on things that both of you dislike about each other, I don't think that's necessarily going to work. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, well, you were saying, too, that uh, you found it conflicting that the most sympathetic character, arguably, in the movie, or one of, was the pedophile dad. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think they, they, they do it well, and it's intentional, right? Because it... Uh, yeah, he's, he's the most open and communicative person, basically, in the movie with his yeah. kid. 
this kid's friend. He's very yeah. accepting, Caring. very respectful of, of the kid's questions, you know, gives yeah. the, his son space when he's working through some things and then trying to figure things out. Yeah. And overall, generally a more present parent. It comes out that he's a pedophile. After he, that happens, the kid asks um, the dad about, you know, what happened, like what mm -hmm. what it is that he did to the kids. And he explains it. I felt that that was just insane. Mm -hmm. That is where, okay, the bad, the good parenting stopped. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> where he's t telling, describing to his kid what he did yeah. to his kid's friends, yeah. basically, or classmates. Yeah. And so, but before that, mm -hmm. and this is the thing that is so tough, I think, as a viewer, because mm -hmm. this is the guy, this is the one person in the movie that I actually felt like, oh. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Even as he was going through to therapy and having and sharing dreams he has of murdering people in a park, mm -hmm. I was still like, well, he's going to therapy and he's trying to work it out. Mm -hmm. But here he is having great relation, a great relationship with with um, his kid mm -hmm. and really being so open and patient mm -hmm. with the kid. Definitely does not believe in what the the wife's how the wife treats the kid. Like when when um, when Trish is like, oh, just ignore him. He mm -hmm. has he's pretending like he's he says he's depressed. Yeah. But just ignore him. He wants attention and he's like clearly no mm -hmm. you know of course we gotta you know talk to this kid and, and does go and talk to mm -hmm. his kid you know and when the kid is obviously like at, a, at that age where they're asking about certain birds and bees kinds of questions mm -hmm. he's super responsive you know and very careful to you know about what he's saying and also very understanding of the fact that this kid is ha is um getting a lot of very bad information from his um, classmates. Mm -hmm. And he, as a, and I think as a parent, you obviously, at a certain age, you know that your kids are going to get exposed to the birds and the bees kinds of stuff. And you have to become the filter, mm -hmm. right? That actually lays everything out in a way that is actually re real and true. Mm -hmm. And it's going to help the person, the kid, like adjust, adjust or adapt to becoming a teen, basically, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And to growing up. The dad does that really mm -hmm. well. And I, I was, I, I found that the scenes where the dad and the kid uh, were talking, I found them to be so yeah. sweet, yeah. you know? Just yeah. so sweet. People are complicated. There could be someone who does the most horrendous thing in the movie, you know, more respectful and more understanding otherwise. Oh, yeah. yeah, I um, think that that was kind of testament to, in life, you meet a lot of people, right, who someone seems really sweet mm -hmm. or just like maybe they seem like they have their act together, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But you don't really know what's happening. Yeah. Um, behind the scenes. Yep, exactly. Yeah, I think that movie, yeah. th especially with their yeah. shadows, that they're yeah. hiding their, their dark side. Yeah. yeah, I think the whole movie is basically doing that yeah. all the time as you're engaging with people. Mm -hmm. The reality is there's so much that we don't present to, mm -hmm. to each other. Yeah. There's so much more that you don't know. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the times we're kind of like comparing ourselves to, mm -hmm. to each other or just thinking, oh, you know, this person is a very respectful man, mm -hmm. a respectable man wow, I'm very impressed or, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Or, oh my God, why am I such a failure? Why is this mm -hmm. person doing so much better? Why can't yeah. I just like, you know? Yeah, it reminds um, me of the story I think Bill Hader tells the comedian where he was going in to an audition and either him or the other guy <clears throat> had a bunch of props. And then, you know, he's, so I say Bill Hader was on the props and he looks over at the other guy and he's like, oh man, this guy doesn't even need props. What am I doing? I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna totally screw this up. I have all this extra stuff, and he doesn't even need it. What, you know, he's, yeah. he's got it in the bag. The guy's looking over, like, oh, that guy's got props. What the <laughs> hell am I gonna do? He's got it for sure. He's prepared. He's got. He's going yeah. above and beyond. But it's because we. So that's the thing. Is like we have yeah. this. Both people are thinking. Oh well, I'm the, I'm clearly. I don't know what I'm doing. The other person. No one knows yeah. what they're doing. We're all making up as we go. We're all yeah. trying our best. And one last thing I'll mention about the movie that I like is um, when Joy. First gets the job uh, helping refugees learn English. Uh, there's a bunch of strikers. She walks through it first day, and they're all calling her a scab, and it hurts her feelings because yeah, no, it seems like a derogatory thing to say. And actually, you know, it's one of those things that reminds me of like the power of and and the effects that that well that things can have, like words can have or actions on. If you're trying to win people over than just insulting people and that people don't even know what your cause is or what's going on, you're going to turn them away simply because you're being rude to these people, you know? And it's, it's kind of like, yeah, you can understand their, their frustration at strike breakers because, you know, people uh, in the office like to be like, you're not a scab, you're a strike breaker. It's the same, it means the same thing, but people don't like to feel that they're a bad person. Everything that someone does, they want to believe it's, it's the good thing. It's the right thing. Yeah. So they'll just change the language that helps them feel better about themselves, which is interesting. But I also found interesting that, yeah, again, it's one of those things where if 
you know, really try hard to not alienate other people that could potentially want to see your point of view. Because once yeah. you do that, you've already upset people. And then it's hard. And in the end of the movie, she ends up kind of feeling more sympathetic towards people striking because she lives through the, yeah. the, the, the job. But that doesn't always happen. And you're off to the wrong foot, uh, off on the wrong foot if yeah. you immediately just start insulting people that have no idea what's going on. Yeah. And that happens like, all the time, especially on the internet. Exactly. Know? Like you're insulting people who, because they're, they don't believe in your cause. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, okay, if you want... Or they're just doing something that is against what you believe, but they don't even know that it's a, what it's against what you believe. Yeah. So you haven't communicated that. So they're just doing something accidentally upsetting you. Yeah. So, you know, they, they, they didn't even know. Can't be upset with people that they don't even know that they're doing something wrong in your eyes. Yeah. Yes. But yeah, that was some of the stuff that, uh, that we found in the movie Happiness. Yeah. But what did you guys think? Yeah. Please comment down Please. below and share your thoughts on our thoughts okay. or just share any thoughts. Yeah. Any thoughts at all. Yeah. Recommend some movies. Yeah. But yeah. That you'd like us to, to, to watch and then comment on. But yeah, until next time, though. That's a wrap.